Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel today, an extra special video. I've got one of my biggest inspirations, the legend in the kitchen with me today, Derek Sarno, come on in. Here he is. This is an honor. So, Thank man. you for coming. Thank you. So Derek and I are gonna show you today how to make mushrooms into meat. This is your expertise. This is what you share on Instagram, blows everyone away. Making these oyster mushrooms into the meatiest tasting dish. And these ones are amazing. I brought you some really special ones. We had them hand-picked just for this, just for you, buddy. Amazing. In today's video, we're gonna make these into steaks. I'm gonna be making a really beautiful cola barbecue sauce, and we're gonna do a slaw on the side, but it's all about the mushrooms. And it's just an honor to have Derek in the kitchen with me today. So let's get cooking. Okay, so one of my favorite sauces is a barbecue sauce, but it has to be done right. It needs to have the right amount of acidity, sweetness, spice to it. So I love to make a barbecue sauce using some really good cola. That's where I'm getting the sweetness from. Trust me on this one, it's incredible. So into the pan, I'm gonna add some really good quality tomato ketchup, some mustard, some brown sugar, some liquid smoke, the cola, bay leaf, garlic, allspice and ground cumin. Finally guys, star anise, two of them because they're my favorites. I love that aniseedy flavor. You just want to get this over a low heat and whisk it together. So now for the fun part, the mushrooms. It's your turn, Derek. Thanks, man. So we're gonna cook these brown oyster mushrooms, which I like to call brown cluster mushrooms. And I wanna, will you rip, get this hot? Yeah, man. The pan? So you wanna get the pan going and get it really hot first, Smoking. Right? And you'll see on the substrate, it grows, the mushroom grows off the substrate, so this is the only part we're gonna remove, yeah. is this part right here. Trying to keep the mushroom together. It's such a shame that for so long in the supermarkets, they were just so broken up. I know, they, you know? yeah, exactly, right? That's why I petitioned to get these on just as they Someone's are, so you can make petition, this. Right? Yeah. <laughs> How long were you picketing for that? Uh, it's been three years, right? So three we got years. it done in three years. Three years demanding mushrooms <laughs> are sold in their natural state. So we're gonna go for two or three of them. I'll just trim them up really quick. And it's really nice because there's very little waste, which is amazing. And they're so beautiful, aren't they? These are gorgeous. I mean, these are they're the best things ever. I get so excited for the mushrooms. My favorite, because they're always sold, for forever, they've been sold and um, you know broken up apart. Yeah. My favorite thing would, to do would be coating them in a batter or a southern fry and make yeah. them really crispy because once you fry them, they turn meaty. Yeah. But the way you cook them and it's all about these cast iron pans for me. Yeah. Um, why why do you insist on using these pans? The, the cast iron pans are one; they're naturally non-stick, yeah. so there's no enamel being sprayed on them that you can scrape off, yeah. and they're super. For one, I have several reasons like. I like to feel like I'm camping all the time. So I have, the, I have these going. Um, yes. I've been cooking with on cast iron pans for almost a decade now, and this, this is my go-to pan. It's what you find in professional kitchens. It's, yeah, I like two because we're gonna show a pressing technique yes. here. Yeah. So the thing, if you look at the mushroom, how we're gonna make this is into a steak or ribs. Yep. And the way that meat is has has that marbling so yeah. we're going to recreate that marbling by compressing the mushroom th with the two pans and then all the flavor goes into the layers and we add that little bit of fat and the spices and the seasonings it's like definitely it's amazing it's an amazing well, all those crevices the sauce is going to soak into it's going to be beautiful do you want a little bit of oil in your pan i do yeah. please Pretty good amount because there's no fat whatsoever in here. And eating a steak, like to go to transition to being vegan, I didn't want to give up much. So I want that texture and that mouthfeel and that you know when you when I used to eat meat, it was that fattiness that I liked. That's where the flavor is. So um, yeah, trying to recreate that when you're making vegan dishes is, is important, isn't it's it? It's really yeah. important. So you're testing if the water, the the pan is hot enough just by flicking some water in. Yep, that's all right. You want to make sure it's really hot. Sorry, I'm joking. Did I you? <laughs> I'm joking. The one thing I try to do is, so the stem is the hardest part to cook. Yep. So I try oh, to- maximum heat. And the maximum heat. And you, we, you were on a big burner, so the gas, it goes outwards, so the hot spot's gonna be on the outer part of the pan. So we're gonna put that on the outer. 
I think we can fit three right in here, which is fantastic. And then I just move them around quick. One, because I like touching the food all the time. I like being a part of it. We'll let this sit for one second here. So the trick of this is gonna be to take this pan and slowly lower it onto the mushrooms. So you have the natural weight of the pan that's yep. gonna hold down the mushrooms. And then I slightly press it. Of a medium high heat. Yeah, the flavor from that surface area of, of the mushroom that you're able to get onto the pan now, onto the bottom of the pan, and then that weight is gonna just, there's no escape in it, you know? You're yeah, flattening yeah. it. It's flattening it out so it's even heat on all of them. Imagine the mushroom is like a sponge, yeah. which has a lot of water in it. Yeah. So what we're doing is driving the water out, yeah. and then when we add the flavor, it's gonna soak that flavor in, Yeah. which is just, yeah. it's magic. Well, it's like it's like making a mushroom bolognese. People always add the liquids too soon. Yeah, yeah, you got Let them cook out. Yeah, Come on, exactly. and then they become meaty. Exactly. So this is one of those recipes where you do need to get your extraction fans on, open windows, because yeah. it's all about getting that heat. And you're going to get some smoke, but it's that's where the flavor is coming from. Right? Yeah, and we'll get more smoke as they go on yeah. and cook a little bit more. So one of the things I don't do right away is season it. So, and the reason being, I don't want the seasoning going on the top pan that's yep, pressing them. Yep. So I'm just gonna flip this over. I'll do this one. Oh, wow. Look, Look at, at that, that color. I know, right? That is beautiful. Oh man, it's already getting my mouth watering. It just looks so much more colossal <laughs> that in, their, in their true form. Like when you do them, when they're, they're all broken up already, you can get that same effect, but you just, it's not as colossal. This will wow whoever you're cooking it for. So I'm gonna add a little bit more oil because it'll soak up that oil from before. Yeah. Just add a little bit more on each side. So then we do the second press. So I flipped them over, now we'll add this again. So this is the second press. Once they're flipped over, no seasoning on because it's gonna stick to the bottom of the other pan. I get it. So now we'll cook the other side and then we'll give that a couple minutes. And we preheated the oven to 200 degrees yep. Celsius fan, right? So yep. for my US friends, our US friends, that's 400 degrees. I'm glad someone's here to convert the uh, temperatures because I just okay. let, leave my audience to do it themselves. Yeah. I don't know the American, <laughs> fair enough. I'm not that clever. So you can hear the sizzle going away because now the water's really coming out of them. And what I'll do is I'll end up lifting the pan up and letting the water, the moisture cook off. And what happens there? That liquid cooks off, but it reduces down and clings onto the mushrooms. Yes. So it's just intensifying. Never drain that away. No, never. Never drain that away. Just let it cook away. So when you do it, we're doing lion's mane or maitake. You can do this with any kind of cluster mushroom or puff mushroom, so the lion's mane. A lot of water will come out, but you leave that water in there because it just intensifies that flavor yeah. so good. So we have some of this, the new barbecue spice. Yep. Yeah. And so I just want to really liberally add this onto each mushroom. A good amount. I feel like people tend to not season enough. So true. And just make sure you get a good amount on here. Yeah, so you've got a few stages of flavor here. You've got the caramelization, just plain mushrooms. So you've got all that color on the mushrooms. Now you've got this spice mix, which is yeah. a variety of different flavors. Is there salt and pepper in there already? There's a little bit of salt and pepper in there already and the smoky, it's gonna go very well with your Well, that's it. Stuff. So then that's the third bit of flavor. Then you get the roasted flavor. Yeah. It's about creating different layers of flavor. And if we're ever doing barbecue, I tend to always season it with the dry rub and then the sauce, because yeah. it's just yeah. that much more potent and exactly. dreamy. So I'm gonna add a little bit more oil because when we flip them, now the spices are gonna hit the pan and I don't want them to just burn on the dry pan. And that oil is gonna, again, create the flavor, the fat, the taste, and help with the texture. So flip that over. So you're going in now for the third press. Yeah, third press. Yeah. Apply a little bit of pressure on here and that squeezes out any excess water too and it's also gonna help them condense a little bit yeah. more. So you've been cooking for ages with your brother? I have been cooking with Chad. for ages, And Chad. when did you start Wicked Healthy? We started Wicked Healthy, I would say about 10 years ago. 10 years ago? Wow, was that on social media back then or was it working yeah. in kitchens? Yeah, because I started it just to showcase, you know, as a chef, I just cook so many things and yeah. I photograph it so I can look at it and say, hey, I made that and I can remember the recipe. It's so good when it happens so naturally like that. Yeah. It's the same with me. My friends were just saying, 
you've got to post this food somewhere. Like yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's too good. Like when I went vegan four years ago, I can't imagine what it's like when you went vegan ten years ago and started posting. But I wasn't vegan ten oh, years you ago. Were... Four years for me. Oh boy, same as me. But um, yeah, all I was seeing on social media was smoothie bowls and salads and stuff. Yeah, and I thought exactly. oh, I need to show people real vegan food, like what you can actually make using a professional cooking skill. It's, a, it's it's great when it happens organically like that. So we're going to season this side now. So tell me a little bit about the sort of the nutrients in mushrooms and let's talk about protein then because everyone talks about vegans and protein and I know it's a myth we know that but um, in terms of the protein content in mushrooms as opposed to something like a soy product like tempeh or tofu how do they stand? This the mushrooms do have a good amount of protein I think there's a, a little bit more than three grams per hundred three grams per hundred grams okay yeah. it's probably these are big mushrooms yeah, so yeah. there's going to be a good amount you know when you're putting meals together you can always think about getting oh look at that color you're getting protein from other um elements of your dish anyway yeah. so you don't have to rely on getting full amount of protein from the main meaty elements you know yeah, so whether you would serve this with some quinoa or some wild rice. Yeah, because you don't just eat it on your exactly. on its own. Today we're letting the mushrooms sing for themselves. We're going to do the mushrooms. I'm just just going to make a really simple slaw. I just want to taste the mushrooms on their own with yeah. something crisp and fresh. So I'm going to do a beetroot, pomegranate, kale slaw with a nice little dressing. So I just press it on one last time to make sure we have all the sides cooked uh, and seared properly so it's really even flavored throughout the whole thing. Oh, look at that. Look at that juice. Beautiful. All right, so it's sauce time, baby. So the mushrooms are about done now. They're really condensed and beautiful with all the seasonings around. And you want these crispy bits. So yes. the, the darker, that's not really burnt, but it's close to it. And that's what's gonna add so much flavor, especially yes. in the barbecue. So we're gonna take them now and dip them in the sauce that- oh, Straight in my barbecue Just straight into it. Oh. I mean, that sauce is just gonna taste even better now. Well, exactly. Look at this. Yeah, just submerge the whole thing. Uh, do you know what I feel? I don't want to hurt your mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, feel. Just be gentle with the mushroom. Look at that. Yes. Whoa. I like the sauce because it's gonna, the sugar will help it stick yes. on. I mean, it's yes. just gonna be amazing. And then we just pop it in the oven. In a hot oven, 200 degrees, this is gonna just car caramelize around it. Yeah. For about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. So we're gonna clean the pan by just wiping it out a little bit here. Just get all the bits off it. Run it under cold water really quickly. And then to care for the pan, which is super important, is just to add a little bit of oil and take that paper towels and wipe it. It's, it's practically no cleanup at all. And then that just keeps it seasoned and ready for the next time. And these pans are yours, G. I'm leaving these for you. Oh, you're a legend. Thank you. Yeah, Thank dude. you so much. Real American meat, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so whilst those incredible mushrooms are in the oven, I can hardly wait. They're looking incredible. I'm just going to make a simple slaw to go with them. I don't want anything to rival these mushrooms now. So all I'm going to do is slice some golden beetroots on a mandolin. So I'll just toast off some fennel seeds and some poppy seeds for the dressing. Finally chop a shallot and garlic for a dressing. So Derek's just ground up um, the toasted fennel and the poppy seeds. And they're going to go into this mixing bowl now. And we're just going to get all the ingredients for this salad in together. The pomegranate going in there too, that sweetness is going to work so well with the barbecue sauce. And then our liquids, I'm going to add some red wine vinegar and some maple syrup. So the acidity in the vinegar is going to break down the beetroot and make it really nice in this slaw. And some kale that I lightly steamed. Finally, Derek, if you can just put a little bit of um, some tarragon leaves in here as well because of that aniseed flavor too. So our slaw is done. Looks great. Looks amazing. We need to get them out. I'm, I'm excited to see Ready? these. Yeah, please. Okay, so the mushrooms should be done now. Oh my God. Yes. Look at that bubble. Oh, wow. wow. 
That was proper steaks right there. Woo. <laughs> Derek, they look unbelievable. The smell, it's, it's just like, it's just like barbecue. Yeah, yeah. It's barbecue. It's amazing. It's incredible. And uh, I guess you need to cut them up, yeah. get them on our presentation board, and we can taste them. Yeah. Unreal. Miles right now. Derek, thank you so much. Tell the cameras what you've just made here with me today. Guys, we made some amazing barbecue cluster brown steaks with this amazing slaw that Gaz has made and also his what do you call the barbecue sauce? I would call that a cola, the cola, cola sauce. Cola yeah. barbecue sauce. Yeah. This is the meal for the day. Sunday oh, roast. This is wicked. This is wicked. wicked. We'll have to do a show on our channel. Yes. Soon. And, but we need to give this a taste first. Yeah. You're a genius. <laughs> Should I sieve it up for you? You're my yeah, guest. Please, no, please. That'd be great. Whoa. This is comfort food, right? Go have your greens. Fantastic, man. Thank you. All right. I'm very excited to try this. God, this is so meaty. It is so meaty. <laughs> Good sauce, man. And that, it's amazing, right? And that sauce is super good. That is unbelievable. I love cooking this for other people because this is what it's a changer, like a game changer. Definitely, right. so true. You put a nice plate of food, vegan or not, in front of someone, they're gonna enjoy it. Mm. So if people take the time and the effort to explore new ingredients, like using cluster mushrooms for the first time, or you know, even jazzing up chickpeas or something like that, if you make them flavorsome and you build flavor, you're gonna blow someone away and get them introduced to vegan food. And, um, you do that so well, and thank you on behalf of all the community for doing what you do, because um, this is game changing, like you said, and this is unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Derek Sarno of Wicked Healthy, Wicked Kitchen, the legend. Please check out his stuff. Please check out his YouTube channel. All the links are below. Thank you again for being on my show. And don't forget to like, share, comment, hit the subscribe button. Getting close to that 1 million mark where I'm going to announce where my first restaurant will be. And of course, my new cookbook, Plants Only Kitchen, will be out in April 2020. Oh, this year, April. We're in January already. Crazy. Thanks again for being on. Thanks, This guys. is unreal. This guy is the legend. <laughs> he is amazing. Love that. Oh, thank you. Shit, man. This is amazing. <laughs> oh. I forgot to say, the slaw works really well it with really it too, well, right? It does really work really well. well. The herbs yeah, in it. Mm. Okay, you gotta try it now. Mm. God, this is fun, isn't it? <laughs> like, like, like two proud dads holding their newborn. Yeah, just submerge the whole thing. Do you know what I feel? I don't want to hurt your mushrooms. That's what I feel. Just be gentle with the mushrooms. How do you say this? Shallots. No, how do you say it properly? Shallot. Sha Charlotte. Charlotte. I can't do it in the American Shalot. accent. Shallot. Shallot. <laughs>